networks, a truly autonomous network. So I mean, people in New York are really building it from the ground up. They're about to get a, a, a bank account with a credit union. People have given so much support and so much money that they have finances. They are really an autonomous collective at this point. And so uh, I just want to say that that's where people in New York are at. That's where a lot of other groups are at. Looking at demands to the system to change, but also they're not going to listen to a lot of those demands. So how do we get those things that we need moving forward? Uh, so I, I think like Albert said, I think one of the biggest things is what do we want to do from today forward? Like how do we want to move forward right now? What can we do in Buffalo as we go throughout this? So if people have ideas, I'll just take stack. I don't know. We still have a note taker. Very good. Question. Um, are we, I mean, in a general kind of direction, uh, just to throw out, throw a question out there, um, are we going to go and address the issues to the existing authorities, or are we going to create a new direction? Forget them. I mean, personally, you know, he's questioning, are we going to the authorities, or are we going to forget them and move on? I think it's kind of both. I think some things we're going to we're going to ask or demand be changed, and sometimes they might be listened to. Sometimes they might fall on deaf ears. And it, I think the main thing that you're right. I think it's up to us to create what we want. If they're on board, great. If not, you're part of the old, and we're in with the new. So I mean, we're we're creating something else. So I, that's my take on it, and I think that's where folks in New York are at right now. One of the things I think we should do. There's an election coming up. Should be lobbying everybody who's either a candidate, anybody who's running against Collins, the Democrats, whoever signed up the working families party or the Green Party. We gotta get out and start talking to people, start knocking on doors, start talking about the destruction that's been happening here in the county. What's been done as far as stripping away cultural. So we'll need to get some of that going on right away. That's, that's the quickest thing because we've got an election in November. That's what, five weeks away? So I would call that outreach. That is definitely like number one. They have committees in New York. There's a lot of them. They have about 20 different committees. There's food, medical, legal, the whole network. And their biggest one is outreach. And they said, everyone's on outreach. All of us. We're the whole outreach committee. It's up to us to spread it by word of mouth, by phone, however that's possible. So I'm with you on that. And you had mentioned, I'll write it down, uh, election season. I have two thoughts. First, um, I think that in addition to saying, like, what can we build that's separate? How can we appeal to the existing system? There's also this third way, and how, like, it's how can we use the existing system? This is why I'm in graduate school, because universities have an enormous number of resources, and a lot of, like, forward-thinking people who don't necessarily know how to organize themselves. There are a lot of existing resources that we can use and reappropriate to make it to what we want. My second thought is maybe if you want to facilitate, how about we have another person take stack so that we can have somebody who's taking note of who's raising hands when. Um, does that sound like a good idea to everybody? Yes. Yeah. Volunteer? I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bravo. Hold on just a second. Who's recognizing the speakers? She is. He. he. Oh. <laughs> All right. I didn't see what order in which hands came up, so we're going to start going this way. Um, so in the back there, in the uh, brown hoodie. Okay, um, I had a question and a comment. Um, my question was, when you were saying New York, did you mean Wall Street? Yeah. Okay, and my comment is about politics. Um, I think that uh, our politics is broken, and I think that we need something that's in some ways an alternative to politics. Um, like, for example, you know, it's not normal politics for us to talk about deciding things through a consensus-oriented process. I think that's great. I think we should be doing things that are, that are noticeably different from politics. Even if we, there's a candidate we like and we support them, they're in the system, the system is all bought. I don't want to be a part of that. I want to start articulating something that's an alternative to what is screwing us. So I like the idea of getting engaged in politics, and I think we should all do it, but that's separate from what we're doing here, in my opinion. <laughs> says, and I totally agree with him, but we have an election coming up in a month, and we're not going to change the system in that month. So I don't see why we can't do both. And in answer to what you were talking about, if you are opposed to Collins, 
then you should check out Mark Poland cars. And his headquarters is on Harlem. And check him out. If you don't want to vote for either one of them, well, then you're voting for Collins, basically. But I think we should be involved in the process from here to November while we're planning what else to do. And I'm in total, dis I'm in total agreement. And at this point, I would just throw in, I used to contribute to the Democratic Party. I don't anymore. I pick and choose my individuals, and I contribute to their campaigns no matter where they are in this country. I think that's a start to breaking up a broken system. Um, I agree with Heron in terms of doing something different from politics. I personally am not of the opinion that uh, going to political leaders is really an answer. I think it's more of the same, but I'll leave that at that. Um, what I do believe we need to do is continue to gather. I think the idea of an occupation makes sense. If we can, if we can get numbers and we have a dedication of people who will stay there overnight and continue the occupation. So I think we should consider that as we grow this movement, but number one, we need to keep meeting. The idea, the, the, way, the reason you're all feeling power right now is because you're actually here and your voice matters. And when you speak, people are listening to you and you're at the table where decisions are being made. One of the places where we get disempowered is when we vote for someone to make decisions for us. You don't need anyone to make a decision for you. Your voice, your mind, they all work just perfectly fine. And this is a new model right here. This is direct, real democracy. There's no such thing as representative democracy because you can't represent democracy. You can only empower yourself to participate in democracy. This is what democracy is. So continue to meet. I, I think we need to come out. I, I propose that we come out of this meeting with what we're going to do next as a group. I'll leave it at that. I have Jean, uh, you have the green jacket, and Andre. Uh, the only thing I want to say, but you kind of said it for me, is um, I used to be involved in politics and vote for certain people, but the system is broke, so I'm not playing the game anymore. So I don't want to play that game anymore. So I, I kind of agree with what you're saying, but it's not working. It doesn't matter who you're putting in there, is my feeling. So I'm thinking that coming up with a new set of rules and making it part of the demands that we have as far as a new system. The old system doesn't work. Don't get you respond, but we're not doing it that way. So I'm not going to. <laughs> I think there are people in Congress and in the Senate. People like Kuschenich. I would love to see Elizabeth Warren in there. Grayson. There are a number of people. If those people were supported you'd see a very different government than you see today. Grace is not in Congress anymore. He's running again. Right, but he's not in anymore. But I'm giving him as an example of when he was there and he's he is coming guy. there. Yeah. So that's... What's your name? Marina. Marina. Radical statement, radical question. Yeah. What if we just, because the numbers are so huge, and we just got the support uh, of uh, unions that numbers were over, that were over 200,000, the numbers are growing of support. What if everybody just didn't vote? Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. The Republicans win on no. the No, what if the people, yeah. all these people involved in this Occupy, we just dug our heels in and we didn't vote? We stopped the playing way. their game. It'd be invisible. Yeah. What? You'd be choosing invisibility, in my opinion. Stay on stack, please. Oh. Andre's next on stack. Um, uh, a, a few little things. I can't really speak to the political situation in Buffalo because I'm not from here, I'm from Rochester. So I don't know about all the different uh, people who are running and stuff. Um, but I don't think that not voting will make that much of a difference just because I know that uh, in one of my classes the other day, my teacher had all the people who voted raise their hands and it was something like 2%, you know, it's just, uh, the voting numbers are so low already that I don't know that we would, could significantly impact that. The other thing that I was talk, thinking about was uh, on the idea of the method here, whether we're going to do an occupation or whether we're going to do marches. Or I think that uh, an occupation is a good idea, but it is getting cold and it is going to get colder. And I do think, <laughs> I, I think that uh, there should be a set schedule of opportunities throughout the week for people to, uh, who aren't willing to stay here or stay at a certain place all the time, to 
come in and be active, say, you know, like, every Friday at such and such time, you know, everyone said, you know, students, oh, we just got out of class, we're all going to go march here at this time, and that's going to happen every week, or, and then uh, every uh, Saturday at this time, everyone gets together and meets, so even if there isn't a consistent 24-hour occupation, I think there should be a throughout the week consistent meeting where people can uh, come together even if we all have disparate schedules. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause for a second and go because I have a number of people on stack and I also want to get names. Um, so I have uh, Brian, Carly, um, gentleman in the brown hoodie. What's your name? It's H E R O N Heron. Uh, Andre again. Um, young man. The, what's your name? Uh, Paul. Paul. And then I have a gentleman in the blue park over here. What's your name? Anthony? Alright, next deck. Brian, go for it. Uh, just about the, the not voting thing. I understand it's a great like idea. I think this is the forum to throw out ideas like that. But just to keep in mind, if you don't, like any sports uh, analogy sort of thing, like if you don't show up for the game, they win. Right? So like, if we don't vote, and I understand the system's broken, but it's what we got right now, I think this is good in addition. But if we don't show up, Collins gets back, sit back, back in. Young lady said, Michelle Bachman wins. I mean, it's going to get harder if we don't do that as well. I'm not saying that's the answer. Voting is not the answer. And your one vote doesn't matter. Your one vote has to turn into a hundred, a thousand. You've got to talk to everybody. Now, in addition, we do this. You know, show up on, vote, on, on the day of voting, you showed up and you vote. And then we get back here. You know, I, that's just an idea. Um, I don't think I got to introduce myself because I was late. My name's Carly, but I was about the not voting thing. I like I like the concept of it, but I think that so many people already don't vote because they're so you know dissatisfied with the system or whatever. And when you think about it, I think like compared to maybe like the general population, because we all are here and like angry and dissatisfied and really awake and aware of what's going on. We would probably be the ones that would maybe make a little bit better choices about voting anyway. So you're like taking away the people who are really aware of the candidates and everything. So I'm not sure, but I do agree that we need to be like meeting on a regular basis and keep on going with this and not just do it like for a couple weeks and then let it fizzle out because that doesn't send like a really strong message, even though it will get cold. <laughs> er. <laughs> Aaron? Uh, I wanted to make a proposal. Um, if that's in order, because um, we've heard the idea in different ways already that we, um, A, um, keep an occupation in a spot continuous, and I think that's a great idea. I'd like to actually propose that, and B, that we have regular meetings. I think we should pick a time and meet regularly. Okay, so I'm just going to step in as facilitator here and see if we want to move to a vote, if we want to have a discussion about the occupation, uh, at this point, I mean, do you have a location? Would, would we ask for location from? <laughs> We're right across from City Hall. I think it's ideal. So right here? Yeah, aren't yeah, there speech. like news uh, outlets close by to The way I want to do this is generally we would do like, uh, I'll do a three point, which would be like a thumbs up, like kind of in the middle, or a block, like I don't agree with that. There's a lot of people here, so I'm going to try and keep my eyes open. So I'm going to ask, if you agree with this, you're going to put your hand way up. If you are kind of neutral, just put your hand to the side. And if you don't agree that you think there should not be an occupation, just give me a big thumbs down. So is that cool? We'll vote on this right now and then discuss what it would look like after that. So Heron proposes that we have an occupation somehow or another here in Niagara Square. Moving forward. Vote. Every Friday? No, no, no. Continuous. Someone's here all the time. Overnight? <laughs> Overnight? Not even. We got one stand aside, two stand aside, three. So far, we got mostly yeses. I don't see any noes. Um, any comment from the stand aside? We have like Caden, Andre, Chuck, <laughs> and uh, sorry, I forgot. Um, I was just going to say that I. Uh, I think we should be aware of the danger of the numbers dwindling on a 24-hour occupation. And I think that while it's a great idea, we should make sure that uh, we also bring resources into 
uh, the kind of things that I said that people who, you know, people can join in and leave on a weekly basis, right. just so that we can keep our numbers up. I, I agree with Andre. Um, I'm also concerned that, you know, this is, you know, the first day of October. I want to make sure that whoever's here has medical support, has food support, uh, you know, is not going to feel like they're like out in the cold overnight without somebody they can call if something goes wrong. That we have like a comprehensive network of people who will at least be able to be like, hey, I can come pick you up in my car and bring you somewhere warm if necessary, right? Um, I think that that's a big concern for me. Um, Yeah, I mean, do you have a direct spot? If somebody knows the legal thing to just answer, is that illegal in Buffalo? It's not illegal. Not illegal to camp in public space. It's illegal in, in, the, in the parks, but it, this is not a park. Okay. Cool. So I just Can want to you back point up your assertion that it's not a park. I'm very curious about that. <laughs> I just want to point to the process here it's that, like, when you have a mixed vote, you know, when, when people have concerns about that, it kind of goes back to discussion, which is where we're at now. There's kind of a separate question. There seems to be a lot of um, uh, favoritism for, for occupying, but then the question is who's going to occupy? And I think that's kind of a, another part of the process. So right now, people are mostly in agreement. We have no blocks, as far as I can tell. Uh, there are concerns about do we have enough um, resources to continue a sustained occupation, which, uh, to put my vote in there, I'm going to stand aside and I would ask those questions as well. Um, Do we want to return to the original stack? Because I have a huge list. Yeah. <laughs> All right, oh, yeah. So, so I think this is kind of on the table. It's not blocked. We're, the, we're working out the details of an occupation. So uh, just to go back to, I have a huge stack. I have uh, Albert. I have Paul. I have Anthony. I have you in the yellow jacket. What's your name? Jonathan. Jonathan. Uh, Nicholas. Uh, I have you in the back of the black stripe hoodie. John. John. And what was your name? I don't actually know your name. Redbeard. Redbeard. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck. Uh, you in the gray hoodie? What's your name? Yes, Christina. Christina. And last but not least, you, Black Hoodie West. Johnny. Johnny. I have a clarification on process. As soon as you're done. Yeah, go for it. Um, do we, typically in Robert's Rules, I need to motion to table the, dis the vote and the discussion. Are we following any of that, or are you just proceeding? Um, I, I, I had said, yeah, I was on the table. I didn't take a motion to put it on the table. I was just saying this is okay. kind of an unresolved, so. I'm just trying to understand what context. I want a framework so we're, we all agree. That's all. Yeah, yeah I'm using uh, general cons uh, consensus-based process, not anything too specific. Okay. Um, as far as I'm concerned, and I guess our process, you know, that that is still on the table. Yeah, okay. So, all right. So, I have Albert. So, um, while I'm in, I, I'm interested in having an occupation, I think it does make sense to discuss how to make it a successful occupation before, and, and to actually have thinking around when to do it, who's going to be there, and to be organizing around it. And I think that every one of us who leaves here today in our next meeting, the next time we come together, we should bring two or three people with us. So each one, each one bring one, you know, so like that's how we're gonna grow this movement by each of us taking on that responsibility to grow the movement. This is happening all over the country now, all over the world, you know, if you're, if you're really following the news, these kind of occupations, this kind of protest is happening all over the planet at this point. So it does make sense for us to bring as many of our friends and family into this as possible because all of our futures are tied together. Um, I think we should definitely, and it, when, whatever our next meeting is, um, we should really work on how we're going to organize this. Because I, I myself have concerns to just go forward without, with it not being successful. I want it to be successful. If we're going to do it, I want it to be very successful. So I think the more we think about it, the better. Please define success. No, 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 no. Go I have and Paul direct next. yourself. Um, Alright, first of all, before we move further, if we're talking about either meeting next week or doing a 24-hour occupation, we should have someone go around and then just collect everybody's contact information so that we can just be in touch and we won't, you know, have to worry about, you know, everybody will be informed that way. Start a Facebook page. Yeah, there, there is one. There is one. That's how we got here. Facebook page, please. Yeah. 
Oh, you want to quickly size. just a point of information about Facebook? I just started. I started the Facebook page for everyone. No one, took, no one took the initiative. Facebook. What's it called? Occupy Buffalo. Carly, I got you. Okay. Occupy Buffalo. Not Buffalo. That's where I found it yesterday. Not the Buffalo. Yeah. Oh, New York. Right. <laughs> it's not Occupy New York. You know what? Everyone should have the Facebook page. You know, this isn't about eight different groups, two different groups, and I, I, I. This is about everyone here. You know, this is everyone standing up in one voice and supporting what's going on in New York City and all over the country and all over the world right now. You know. Cool. And right. I have next on stack is Anthony. Oh, I had some um, comment. I had some thoughts about voting. Some of your thoughts about voting earlier, and, it's, and I was thinking it doesn't really matter because both parties are bought and paid for by, by the same people, and the president has already been selected. Even at the local level, whatever governor there is, he's probably already been selected. So voting doesn't change. Voting doesn't change the thing, that's my view. Presidents aren't elected or selected. Yeah, sorry, but I couldn't the cold. Uh, next on stack is Jonathan. I would direct my question to continue this conversation. Um, what's your definition of success for an occupation? Ask Karen and Albert. Albert. If you could both sure. talk about what your definition of success is. So my my definition of success would be an, a successful movement of direct democracy, meaning, and I'll define that clearly, that people come together, we make, we, we through the process, because obviously we don't know, we, it's through the process that we're engaging in right now, we come to an idea of what we want to see changed, and then we engage in trying to make that change manifest. And a successful occupation would be that we actually achieve our, our goals. So clearly defining our goals is part are, is part of this process that we need to do that. As Does it matter when that goal is achieved? Does it have to be achieved within a certain time frame? Some okay. of them may be, some goals will be like that. They'll be short term that you want to see achieved. You know, for example, say we set a short term goal of we want 500 people here. Then we have a very real goal that we should go and work to, to make that happen. So, I mean, there, there's, there's all kinds of examples. There's long term goals that we could look at that, you know, might not have anything to do with the occupation. So yeah, what I what what I said first was continuous, and then when I was asked 24 hours, I said yeah, 24 hours. And my first intuition was that, you know, doing something like that shows a commitment, and it also shows that it's not one, two, ten. It shows as a collective commitment. But I'm not married to that idea, and in fact, I, uh, what I was going to say if I got back on the list was, what we can limit this to just the day hours. What's more important is that it's continuous. Is that we have a sense of commitment and solidarity with what's happening in Wall Street and across the country. What's not important is for us to do something technical, like, oh, it was 24 hours, that's technically every moment of the... No, that's not the point. The point is that we stand up and we stay standing, right? So if it's just a sunlight hour, it's fine. No one should be endangered. No one should have uh, stress put on them medically or anything like that. But we have to be a presence that you expect to see there because we're expressing our commitment. So I'm gonna go back to staff now. I have Nicholas. Um, I think for me, what would be most important is that we keep meeting and that we talk to each other. I think that's more important than figuring out what we want because I think I was talking to Henry about it, and he mentioned to me he's like, there's been some criticisms of the Occupy Wall Street being kind of too nebulous, too vague, like without direction. And uh, I think I'm gonna agree with him that that might be a good thing because then you can gather more people together. Um, I think if you, vote, if you narrow it down too quickly, then I think maybe some energy might be dispersed. Uh, John? Um, personally, I think right now we're getting broken down in the semantics of the politics that we're conditioned to be a part of. I think the goal here is to make a statement, is to show the world, like people on Wall Street did, that you know people are involved in government, we represent ourselves, we make our own decisions, so involvement should be the key. Getting as many of people as possible is going to make it logistically possible for 24 hours for a network. But the goal is to get as many people involved as possible and give them an experience that they're going to take throughout the rest of their lives with them to make them more a part, to feel ownership of their political process. So I think that until we have a good idea of how many people that we're going to get, it's impossible to determine can we do 24 hours or can we do this or that. We need to focus on waking people up and making people aware that this is happening. Henry. All right. I wrote down the date. Global Day of Action, Saturday, October 15th. It's already out all over the internet. People are talking about it internationally. Spain, Middle East, Europe, United States. 
So I just wanted to point out that that would be a great day to have an action, whether it's a march or uh, the beginning of an occupation here in Buffalo. I just think it's significant. There's probably going to be a lot of media attention. So I just wanted to put that out there that I, I think uh, a target date, uh, I'd like to set this as a target date for a particular type of action moving forward. Right, That's two weeks from now. Stack. I want to uh, reiterate it really fast. Next we have Chuck, uh, Christina, uh, let's see, Johnny, you're next after Christina, then Ellie, then Carly, Alyssa, who's down here, Paul, Paul's back on stack, then Robert, uh, gentleman in the plaid jacket, what's your name? Uh, Jason. Jason. Uh, gentleman in the straw hat here. Tim, and behind him in the purple scarf. Suzanne. Pardon? Suzanne. Suzanne. All right. Take away, Dr. Joy Davis is being buried today. They're having a funeral down in Georgia. And, Can you speak uh, up a little bit? And Troy Davis is being buried today. He was executed last week, despite hundreds of thousands of people calling for his clemency. There's also thousands of prisoners on hunger strike in California and hopefully soon in other states. I think we've got to storm the Bastille in a, in, a, in, a, in a metaphorical sense and just be a presence at these places that are, that are, that are dishing out oppression. That would be the economic centers, the, the prisons, and they're very much tied into the economic base of this country and the people who are oppressing us. We got a jail right down here. My, me and friends were there every Wednesday between five and six. We happen to reach critical masses, like ten people for us. You know, we're like happy when ten people show, and we got to do better than that because they're killing people there or making people kill themselves. Well, I'm really glad to see this happening, and I hope when we hit a critical mass, we start getting in their faces. Thank you, Christina. Um, oh, I just cool. wanted to say that. Um, I think the occupation is a very good idea, but being in New York, we had a lot of problems with that. Um, as far as legal issues, and the police will try and throw you out for every reason they can possibly think of. So I think we really need to make sure that it's completely 100% legal for us to be here, for us to stay here, because, I mean, especially being in front of City Hall, um, they're going to try and make us leave for every possible reason they can think of. Um, we're not going to be allowed to have tents or space heaters or any of that stuff. So I think we really need to get all that organized and finalized before we really actually, you know, make more plans to go forward with that. Because I want it to be successful and you don't want, you know, us to show up on the first day and have them chase us out right away. It's not a problem. You sure? Johnny? Okay, what I want to really mention is how important it is to spread awareness you know we have probably about maybe 40 people here but we really need to increase those numbers facebook is an excellent source we need to spread that idea you need to go on facebook you need to spread awareness you need to spread what's going on in wall street i'm right here next to me is a man named eric gershbacher he's he was down in wall street protesting for about five or six days he can tell you firsthand what bruce a police brutality he experienced and what is to come you all want to make a change. We're all here to make a difference. But what we have to remember is the, uh, the reality of all things. The police don't want, to, want us to be here. They'll do anything to get us out of here. But I really want to turn my voice over to a man who has experienced this firsthand and can uh, talk from experience. His name's Eric Kirschbacher. I guess this is my cue. People, I was just listening to all of us and what I really gathered is just what's most important is just thoughts of direct action. Do you speak louder? Yeah. What I just was feeling about what's most important are thoughts of direct action. A little bit about myself. I'm Eric Gershbacher. I'm a student at Buff State. I grew up in West Seneca. My family has been, in, we lived in that suburb, but we were always below the poverty line. Um, I was arrested on Tuesday. I sat on a tarp. Cops beat my ass. It's pretty fun spread awareness all over the place. It was a beautiful thing. What I'd really like to see us do is get out here Monday morning, have markers and cardboard and paper. And on the paper, we'll put together a few signs and slogans. 
things we want people to read, things we want people to see.